The fewer guns we have in the world, the better it is for mankind. They are as determined as ever. Mr. Chairman, small arms and light weapons are truly weapons of mass destruction. The United Nations conspiring with the majority of its members to do what they've already done to their own citizens. Deny you your firearm freedom. In New York, right here in our own shores, we've got a Trojan horse. They want to set U.S. firearms policy. They want to take the decision away from the U.S. electorate and undermine our Constitution. That's really their ultimate agenda, to bring the United States down from the pinnacle of freedom to simply being another one of these socialist states where the government controls everything. And just who are these gun grabbers? Countries like Japan. We strictly punish and control the possession and the use of small arms by civilians. Britain and Australia. Firearm owners in Australia must also demonstrate a genuine reason for ownership. The Netherlands. It's my firm conviction that the illicit trade cannot be tackled without involving the legal arms trade. And Canada, led by its former Minister of Justice, Alan Rock. Registration is the cornerstone of the entire strategy. Alan Rock is now Canada's voice at the United Nations. His anti-gun agenda has now front and center at the world stage. That's scary. Scary because the United Nations continues to get away with what it does best. It's a stealth operation. Secretly scheming behind closed doors to outlaw your guns. We must not wait until 2006. Accountable to no one. People don't get elected to the UN. And that's the really scary thing. How the hell do you get rid of a UN bureaucrat? These are the, the biggest human rights violators in the world and they're trying to tell uh, people in the United States that we shouldn't have certain civil liberties. But the UN is not pushing its agenda alone. There's a propaganda machine working every day, targeting the NRA and gun ownership as evil. It's called IANSA, the International Action Network on Small Arms. This is not about military small arms. This is not about rocket launchers. What they're really after is my um, Winchester hunting rifle. Just log on to IANSA's website, and you'll see it's made up of more than 500 anti-gun NGOs, or non-governmental organizations. They are absolutely awesome in terms of the power they have. Power and a plot that is being engineered right here in London, in that building behind me where IANSA is headquartered. Imagine, nearly 230 years after the American Revolution, there are still forces at work here on British soil determined to trample on your freedoms. These people believe that ultimately they know how to live your life a heck of a lot better than you do. Uh, hi, I'm Rebecca Peters. But the plot gets even thicker. The woman who heads up IANSA, Rebecca Peters, led the gun ban movement in Australia. It's time for tough, tough gun laws. Gun owners forced to surrender their firearms to the saw blade, scrap heap, and blast furnace. Now, Rebecca Peters is determined to do the same to American gun owners. We phoned Ms. Peters here at her office and also emailed her requesting an interview, but she never called us back. Rebecca Peters is like a live hand grenade with a pin almost out. She is an extremely dangerous person. Dangerous not only because of what she's done, but because of who she knows. She is good at getting funding, and funding is the key. Working for gun hater and billionaire George Soros' Open Society Institute, Rebecca has secured a seemingly endless supply of money for the UN's global gun control agenda. The pro-gun forces are outnumbered, outspent, 20 to 30 to 1. It's huge. We have thus far contributed 1.87 million US dollars. The amount of funding that they're receiving from governments around the world is absolutely staggering. Britain, one of the biggest. After doing some probing, we found out it gave a $2 million grant in 2001 to IANSA through Britain's Global Conflict Prevention Pool's small arms strategy. With titles like that, 
you can see why the money trail is impossible to trace. I don't know if 10 bloodhounds searching this stuff out with 100 accountants can find it. In fact, you probably didn't know UNICEF is a partner in all of this. Think of the little kid who showed up at your door on Halloween with a UNICEF box. Would you say no? But it's also an instrument to take away your firearms. So the U.S. taxpayers get to pay for a lot of this trash that comes out of the U.N. to ban what really is a human right. But U.N. supporters like Amnesty International don't see it that way. The U.S. citizens do not have a blanket right to, to, to use these weapons as they feel fit. They think gun owners are primitives who have to be brought into the modern world. And attorney Mark Benenson should know he was the former chairman for the American branch of Amnesty International. His cousin founded the organization in England in 1961. I recall how horrified they were when they found out that I was a life member of the National Rifle Association. The Brits were paralyzed with dismay and they didn't know what to do about it. But Mark insists that what they're doing now is not the answer to a safer world. Not at all. I think it will be a safer world for tyrannical governments and a safer world for the criminals who don't give up their firearms. It certainly will not be a safer world for ordinary people. England and Australia have already proven that. Their gun bans have backfired, crime skyrocketed, and innocent victims left defenseless. Sure, the government's banned private ownership. It hasn't stopped the criminals, no way. Not in any shape or form. It's a crock, it's making no difference whatsoever. I mean, the people in the street, they're gonna get their guns anyway, no problem. Facts that don't matter, because many countries are already enforcing the UN's agenda. Canada is leading the charge on this beyond any doubt whatsoever. They even have committees in Ottawa specifically set up to implement the United Nations gun control programs. Our government won't tell us what they're planning. What they've said carte blanche is that these UN regulations have got to be included in our national legislation. I think it's, it's, it's a very dangerous situation. A program of action is a beginning, not an end in itself. Implementation will be the true test. The ultimate goal? an international treaty that would be binding. Unlike a law, unlike a statute which can be made today and, and changed tomorrow, uh, an international treaty is forever. If it wasn't for the NRA's presence at the United Nations, everything would have been lost years ago. Make no mistake, this treaty will snuff out the Second Amendment if the anti-gun forces succeed in electing an anti-gun president and an anti-gun Senate. The United Nations is as much a threat to our right to keep and bear arms in this country as is Handgun Control Link or George Soros. Their agenda is very dangerous, it is very clear, and it is very sinister. But on that day, when a treaty is ratified, your gun rights guaranteed by the Constitution will be gone. This is not an issue only for gun owners, it's an issue for everybody who believes in, in our Constitution and democratic governance. You need to go to your congressmen and to your senators and tell them that in no uncertain terms the United States government should not back the United Nations programs. They're treading on dangerous ground and you cannot let your guard down ever. Let there be no doubt. Dictators around the world hate the United States because the United States is free. They're scared of your guns and they're gonna come and get them.